there are many things happening on the ground in a lot of places around the world saying, look, this doesn't work for us. You can say, well, it's all about making money and money is readily measured. The problem for a new narrative, new economics, is that you're not going to get to such simplistic measures. <laughs> are in the process of, to really develop a, an economics that is much more life affirming. And I've got some ideas about what that new story looks like. And it, it's, it's got to be a story that offers hope and life, but it's not simple. It's not simplistic. So one of the benefits of the neoliberal framing is that you can bring everything down to money. You can say, you know, it's all about making money and money is readily measured problem for a new narrative, a new economics that is based in ideas around complexity and systems, and systems are sort of coordinated holes that have some sense of their own purpose, it is that you're not going to get to such simplistic measures. That there are six core values in this new narrative, and these values could drive a new way of thinking about economics. So one of them is stewardship of the whole. And so in other words, instead of taking care of me and myself and my company only and my profits, um, we really need to be responsible for uh, the, the entire ecosystem that we're embedded in. And there's two levels of those ecosystems. One of them is sort of the, the company ecosystem, if you happen to be a business, another, if you're in a community, it might be the community ecosystem, it might be the national ecosystem. But today, because of the kinds of problems that we're facing, it's a global ecosystem that we also need to be aware of stewarding the resources of the whole. So it's a shared sense of responsibility and care for the long-term well-being of all of humanity and, importantly, all of nature. Because humans are intimately of and part of nature. So the first value is that of stewardship of the whole with this sense of both local, encouraging local activity and bringing that up to the whole system at the planetary level. The second value is what uh, colleagues Tom, Tom Donaldson and Jim Walsh call collective value. And I argue that it's about co-creating collective value. So if you think about these new economies, next economies that Bounce Beyond team is working with, um, they are trying to create collective value for the community. And that doesn't mean just monetary value. It's bringing the idea of wealth back to its original meaning, which is prosperity and well-being for all. It means um, that we optimize the well-being of all, and again, where all includes all of nature, not just humans. So it can't just be totally human-centric. You have to bring in nature. A third value is that of uh, cosmopolitan localism, which means you're really pushing decision-making down to the place where people who are affected by those decisions are making the decisions about what affects them. And yet you recognizing that there is this global well-being that we need to be taking care of too, and that we are digitally connected and globalization is unlikely to go away. So we have to create integrated ways of linking those global interests and demands with the local community's needs and desires. Um, and that includes local communities working in harmony, greater in greater harmony with nature um, around these issues. Another value that's embedded in this is that of regenerate, regeneration, uh, reciprocity, and circularity, which we hear a lot about the circular economy. Um, and so too much of what is going on in the world today is uh, about sort of just growth at all costs, just whatever the consequences. But the idea of a regenerative economy is to tap into the Earth's capacity to regenerate and not do things in our production processes that destroy that regenerative capacity. And in fact, to build that regenerative capacity back in, along with the reciprocity and the idea of circularity. 
another value is that of relationship and connectedness. So in individualism is at the core of neoliberal economics. Um, but the reality is, if we, if we believe in the idea that we, that we grow up and build community and that we humans need community, and that certainly the pandemic has shown us how much we need community in ways that none of us hoped ever to have to realize. But it is, it is understanding that we humans are social beings and that we need the connection, the care, and the relationships that are underpinning the ability to even form communities. And the final value that I, that I articulated was um, that of equitable markets and trade. So we often hear about free markets, which sort of means cutthroat competition for all. But equitable markets would bring in the idea of full, fully costed, fully priced um, goods and services. So one of the things that happens in neoliberalism is that there is this concept of externalizing costs. So if you have some production going on in, in the factory, or if you're doing agriculture and creating industrial agriculture, and there's pollution associated with that, well, dump it into the local river, put it in, uh, into the ground, but equitable markets and trade would build in those costs. Those costs uh, would be internalized into the price, the real prices of goods and services. So that we're not just externalizing costs out into the system. Because when they're out in the system, someone pays for them somehow, either in ecological degrade, degradation, climate change, or social costs, social and health care and health costs of pollution, for instance, or the degraded topsoil that means that future generations will not be able to grow the kinds of crops that they need. So that's that's a, a life affirming set of values. But I think they're understandable. And I think people are you can you can feel people gravitating towards these ideas. And that's what that's the ethos that Bounce Beyond wanted to tap into. And it's the idea of creating a new economic narrative that will guide us into a future where all can thrive. <laughs>